She has her mother's bright blue eyes, tight as little angel does, and the most beautiful smile you've ever seen. She can melt the nice prayer she could. Everyone knows I just lost her to death. I'm so proud of my, to call myself her father. This is a gift from above, I know, which is why I must protect her, no matter the cost. Some people just don't understand. It all started a couple of weeks ago. Some nasty little girl was teasing Katie, my little angel, and she just wouldn't leave her alone. She was saying nasty things, saying about how poor she was, and saying she was dirty and such. She just had the filthiest mouth. Little girls shouldn't be so nasty. She followed Katie home that day, throwing dirt at her and telling her to take a bath in it. But my little Katie showed her what's what, yes she did, and Dad couldn't be more proud. I don't think anyone should hurt a child, even if they don't mean it. Don't get me wrong, but Katie never did anything to anyone. And I love her to death. You gotta understand. I was only being a loving father when I had the body. See, we live in a very rural area, and that nasty mouth little girl clearly had no business following my Katie in the first place. But I know no one would understand. I just couldn't let anything happen to my little angel. Of course, that's when my wife came home and saw that little girl had a few bruises. Can you believe she actually glared at me? As if I'd ever so much as think of her, my little angel. Of course, I was upset, but the sweetheart that she is, he set her on track sure enough. She told her that filthy little girl harassed her and wouldn't leave her be. And I'd tell you that with my wife right off, she was so angry. I had to restrain her. She was gonna call her parents then and there. It was nine in the evening. Well, I finally tracked her down, even though she was furious with me that I hadn't handled it sooner. Of course, we both knew we couldn't explain that filthy old girl had gone missing after the little scuffle now, could we? I mean, she's my wife and I loved her, but she just wouldn't understand. But she just sent Katie straight up to bed and when hear another word from me on the matter, her mind was made up. She's a very headstrong woman. It's part of her charm, you see. So there's no argument with her once she's made up her mind on the matter. Well, after that, I went to tuck the little angel in and read her a bedtime story. And she begged me not to let Mommy call the filthy girl's parents. But I told her how persistent Mommy is, and that she wouldn't listen to me. Of course, that didn't sell it well with Katie at all. She knew that Mommy wouldn't understand. And neither would her schoolmates, Mommy, no, no, especially not her. I told Katie I would think of something, and I promised I wouldn't let anything happen to her. But Daddy's little angel is clever. Daddy's little angel already had her mind made up. I should have understood. Next day, I came home to see my wife lying at the bottom of the stairs in a crumpled, bloody heap. With so much blood, and it had long since dried in the car from when I got home. She had never made it to work that morning. The official story is she'd taken a nasty fall down the stairs and cracked her head open like an egg caught in a tumble. But as I look into Casey's eyes, so empty, so emotionless. No, no, no! Daddy's little angel did not hurt anyone that didn't try to hurt her first. She's special. Anyhow, there was a funeral and the whole family showed up. Katie couldn't have been more bored. She just sat there staring into nothingness of the eulogy was given. If it came time to visit the corpse, she barely gave it a glance. I think she's coping with the loss of her own way. Dad's little angel loved her mommy more than anything. It was just before the burial the next day that the investigator showed up at the door. It was Katie that answered as I was rushing to get ready. I dropped up to the door as this man was questioning my little girl. Gently screwed Katie out of the way and stepped out to the door. May I help you? I asked. Trying to sample polite. Need to ask you some questions about the circumstances of your wife's death. The investigator said, Who are you? I think some of my frustration was coming through, but it might have been my self conscious. I'm sorry. He said with a laugh. Detective Kimball, local PD. Just got the results back from the autopsy and the blunt trauma your wife suffered and the blood stains found on the carpet didn't exactly match up. I was wondering if you could give me a little more insight. 
Well, I'd love to, Detective, but as I told the responding officers, I only found the body when I came home from work. I was here to see it happen. Detective tried to speak again, I think, but I cut him off. Frustration was filling me. If you'll excuse me, we have a burial to attend. I grabbed Katie's hand and walked her to the door, locking it behind me. I glanced back to see that the detective was watching me as we drove away. Katie was silent the entire trip there and back. As soon as we got home, she retreated to her room. The poor baby has it so rough, all this death surrounding her. I shampooed the carpet the best I could to get the stains out and fixed up there for us. We ate in silence, and it filled me with pain to see her suffering. I'll never forget, just before she got up to take her plate to the sink, she looked at me and smiled so softly. Oh, my little angel has the sweetest smile you ever did see. A couple days passed and I thought things were going to get back to normal. Well, as normal as they could be without my beautiful wife to come home to. When it happened, he said I rushed home each day to make Katie as she's coming in from school. But yesterday I was lost in thought and took my time getting home. You see, the day before my wife's sister suggested she come over and bring Katie's cousin to visit. I couldn't refuse, so I had to get in the mindset. I had to show her we were coping. The house was quiet when I got there, but that wasn't so unusual as Daddy's little angel tends to keep to herself and spends most of her time in the room playing with her dollhouse. She's always so clean, and always so quiet. Couldn't have asked for a better little girl. I walked up to check Katie's room and it was empty. I proceeded to check the rest of the house and found her nowhere until I came to the door leading to the cellar. Odd, it was cracked. I pushed it open and started down the stairs. I could see the light spilling across the floors at the bottom of the staircase, illuminating a small puddle of blood just a foot from the bottom of the step. Just hand me the gun, a voice said softly. I'll get you out of here, take you somewhere safe. I rushed down the stairs and found Katie standing a mere two feet away from Detective Kimball. Step bound with rope and bleeding from the head. I approached my daughter and eased the gun from her hands as the detective seemed to eye me with the most dreadful gaze anyone's ever given me in my life. I took the gun in my hands and was surprised at how natural it felt, though it never had a gun in my life. The exhilaration that filled me as I lifted the gun and watched the detective's face contort in terror almost sickened me. Why did you come? I asked him as I am the gun in his head. Your wife's death was not an accident, he replied. I was at work when it happened and Katie was at school. It's been deemed an accident. What did you hope to find here? The coroner stated that she died in the early morning, around the same time you leave for work. I loved my wife! Unconsciously, I pulled the hammer back. If you kill me, the police will know where to look. Can we please? There's no way out of this. Do the right thing. Do it for your girl. If you only understood. Put a bullet in his head. That's all I could do. Of course, I knew he was right. I knew the cops would come soon, looking for him. I turned to my girl. She stood staring at Kimball vacantly. And I told her to run and get the tarp from the corner. She did. Daddy's little angel is so good, she even helped me wrap the body. And I carved. My sister-in-law showed up that night with her husband and kid, and she said she would. And dinner was ready by 8.30. I really think they loved it, my new recipe. I think they'll be back for more.